My name is Marie. I like to make things. I like to turn around and show you how I made those things. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my tinted glasses. I'm sorry I look like the uncle who always wears tinted glasses at the cookout, no matter what time of day it is, but um, I scratched my cornea, so I have that going for me. So anyway, if you are new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. I'm fine, just have a scratch eyeball. But what never changes is my need to create something 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Today, we are going to crack the code of the beading loom, okay? I've cracked the code years ago, forgot what the combination was. I lost it, I wrote it on a piece of paper somewhere and it's somewhere in my world, I don't know. But I decided to pick up the loom again and try to crack that code once more. And I think I got it, okay? So let's get into it. The first thing we wanna do is figure out a pattern that you want to make. I have found that doing a pattern of nine beads going across, 15 rows down makes a perfect pair of earrings, okay? I kid you not. With this pattern, I decided to make like four different ones. Of course, I pulled out my colored pencils, my graph paper, and I drew up something really quick with the beads that I have in my possession, okay? So once you figure out how many beads you need, then you know how many wefts, wefts, it's on a screen, that you need in order to keep your beads in position. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, let's move to the next step. Now you can grab your beading loom, okay? So I'm putting this on a nice background black because the thread that we're using is white, okay? And I wanna make sure you guys can see it. So this is what we're going to use for our wefting threads, okay? So it is bead along, wild fire it's in the description box below okay first things first okay what we want to do is create a loop and then with that loop i want to tie a knot okay just create a loop and then tie a knot at this point so that you're left with a little loop that you could play around with okay Eventually, I got a knot. So I'm gonna take that loop and I'm gonna put it on this middle post, okay? Because when we start working across this, we're gonna be wrapping around this post, coming back across, wrapping around this post, coming back across, wrapping around the post. It just seems like it's better to just put it in the middle, okay? All right, so I have it going across here. Doesn't matter where this first line goes, just as long as it's going across here, okay? I like to wrap it around this middle post. Now we're, now we're free to start going back across. Now when we do that, pay attention to where you're putting your webs. So I'm making sure that I'm putting it in the next one over so that it lays just like this. You see this nice little space here? That's what you want. So now we're gonna go across, making sure that we're in the next space over, okay? Try your best to keep it consistent. If you can't keep it consistent, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, okay? Then we're gonna wrap it around this post. So we're gonna go back and forth doing that same thing. And I like to organize my wefts ahead of time just to make sure that they are already organized. Going around the post, go right back across, Now, if we have nine beads, we just talked about having nine beads. Since we have nine beads, we need to have one more thread, more than the beads. So if I have nine beads, that means I need 10 weft threads, okay? 
course I'm putting the weft on the screen because I, for some reason, can't say weft. Can somebody help me? So I am trying to wrap and make sure that I have nine, make sure I have 10 weft threads going across here, okay? All right, so now I have 10 weft threads going across here. That's exactly what I need for my nine beads, okay? So to tie this off, I like to make sure I'm tying it and it always ends up being, I don't know, at least for me, it just does, okay? It always ends up being that it always ends on the side where you started. You see how we have this string right here? We know this is where we started, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to tie my end to this by keeping it by keeping it tight, okay? So I'm gonna try to tie my string, my ending string to this, okay? And I'm not spending too much time on that because we're gonna be cutting this all later on, okay? But I just wanna make sure that I have the string is tied off and it's not coming loose when I need it to be tight the most, okay? So there we go. Alrighty. Now I'm going to cut that off and that's it. We have everything tied on. It's a little tight, but if you feel that it needs to be tighter, it's supposed to be as tight as a drum, as they say. If you feel that it needs to be tighter, so just make it tighter by winding these two bars and making sure that our butterfly nuts are tight. Okay, nice, boom, boom. So what I like to do is I want to work from, obviously you're gonna be working from one side, okay? So I wanna start from this side. I used wildfire for the weft threads so to string on our beads i'm going to be using nymo nylon beading thread size d so i have this in white and it you know to me i never have a problem with it being white it doesn't really matter what color it is just in my opinion because it's all hidden it's all hidden no one can see it so anyway i am just pulling off a little bit now here's the thing so if you find that your thread is doing this, just cut off a piece like normal. And I like to take it and pull it like this. And then it slowly becomes less and less, okay? There you go. So once I have that, here's the part that is going to be trial and error for you. I find that when, since I am right-handed, for some reason, when I string on my beads and I want to go through the beads, I like to go this way. So if I like to go this way, I want to go and tie my end right here on this last thread, okay? Just, it just for me as a right-handed person, that for some reason, it's just so much better for me stringing the beads in that direction, okay? So I am going to tie a simple knot, nothing crazy, okay? Simple knot. And I like to leave it long, but you don't have to, because later on I'm going to string that up later on. So it's moving around and that's okay, okay? Okay, 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 mm-hmm, okay. All right, so now, I'm grabbing the other end here. These are the beads that I like to use, these bead along. Um, they're like, they're not big eye needles, but they're like, it says collapsible. So you see the eye of the needle right there, they collapse, it collapses so that you can fit it through really, really, really small, tiny beads, okay? So I'm gonna grab one of those. All right, so I have my needle and my thread ready to go. So let me go and try to figure out what pattern I'm going to be using and what beads go with 
this pattern, okay? So as you can see, I have about four designs here that I did. Um, I liked them when I was doing them, but then I was a different person than I was yesterday when I was doing these. So <laughs> I think, actually I did this one today. So of course <laughs> you are a different person than you were yesterday. So I'm going to do this one. So I have it as a combination. I don't know if you can see the color difference, um, but I have it as a combination of these are gray beads. These are just regular blue beads, okay? There's a regular row of blue beads here. This is gray and then this teal blue color. So what I'm going to do, since I have it already situated, this is exactly what I wanted. So um, these are the beads that I gotten from Amazon. They're in the description box below. And I think that all the beads that I need that I wanna use is in here. So I have, gray so i'm going to use gray for that base color and then i want to pick a nice blue but it's a different blue than the teal blue so i kind of like this one um yeah the one reason the, another reason why i like these beads and why i choose them chose them is because of the fact that when you look at them it's not a lot of beads but they're seed beads so they'll last and they stretch over the course of a project. So that is really nice. So I'm going to pick these two color blues, I think, because I wouldn't want to go this color because it's a little too close to, the, to this teal blue. I definitely want the teal blue. So I definitely don't want to do that. I want to get a richer blue that is definitely different than the teal blue. So I like those three colors. So this is these are the three colors that we're going to work with today, okay? Okay, now let's go back to our pattern here, okay? I have all the rows numbered, okay? And if you can notice that I start from row one going through row 15. So that would mean if this is row one, this is where we're starting. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna finish up here, okay? So that I know what direction I'm going when I'm doing this pattern, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, we have our beads ready to go. I'm going to grab a tray. I'll have those in the description box below also. What I like to do, you may be like, girl, what you about to do? What you about to do? Yeah, I'm gonna mix these beads up, okay? Because it don't make no sense to have three beading trays when all these beads are going into one project. So I like to put a little bit, I don't wanna go too crazy with the mixing in the carry on, like calm, calm down. I just need a little bit. I don't want to, I don't want to take the whole bag of beads and try to mix all that together. It just ain't gonna work out, okay? So I'm just mixing how much I think I'm gonna need. You can count them out if you want to, but I ain't doing that. I'm just doing a ballpark. So I'm mixing these beads together so that they're easy to grab and go and put it on our loom, okay? There's a lot of videos out there that teach you how to um do the beading part of looming what this video is going to do i'm going to do a really quick breeze through on this but you're more than welcome to get into your search bar on youtube and look for how to bead on a beading loom and there's so many videos out there but what this video is going to focus our main focus is how to finish it because this is for the people who don't know how to finish it off okay so I'm gonna grab my beads. I like to put my beads underneath my loom, okay? For some reason, it just works out better that way. You ain't got far to go. You ain't gotta move these beads all over the place because next thing you know, you got beads everywhere. So I like to keep my beads underneath my loom, okay? I'm going to have my pattern off to the side here so that I can read it myself and just start putting them on there, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm starting from row one. Once I have it strung on how many beads I need, I'm going to take and string these beads all the way down my string here. And I like to take and just put my needle down, okay? Just put it down, you don't really need it right now. It's only going to get in the way. And of course, like I said, I'm being really quick with this, okay? I am going to make sure all my beads are in the middle of each or in between each of these wefts, okay? If you have nine beads, you have 10 weft threads and the beads 
go right in between those, okay? Like this. Once you have your beads in the places where they're supposed to go, so what I'm doing is just pushing them up, okay? I'm getting them out of the way of these threads because I'm gonna take this needle, push it through these beads, and they go above these threads, okay? Here's another thing you have to be careful with this, okay, is you want to make sure that this needle is not splitting any of these threads, okay? The reason why I chose the needle that I chose is because it's very blunt. It's not going to split anything. It's not going to pierce through anything except for going through the hole of the bead. That's it. And you can tell immediately when you hit one of the wet threads because the needle will stop. It won't go any further it's like I, i'm not sharp enough to go through these so so that's why i chose these needles instead of using the traditional beading needle okay because those tend to split threads and then once you start splitting threads then you start losing beads and then your work just looks like garbage to me personally i try to stay away from those um really sharp needles so i'm going to pull this through And there you go. Now, if you feel that you need to get a little bit deeper on the uh, actual beading part, there's plenty of videos. I might even find a video on here and just do a little card at the top um, that you can go to find out how to get really deep into your beading part of the loom process. Um, this might be a video that I use myself to get a refresher course as to how to do this. So I'm going to tag that video really quick. If you feel like, oh, I got this part, then let's move on. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bead all of this. Okay. And I'm going to do it twice because this project that I'm doing in particular is perfect for a pair of earrings okay so i'm going to thread up this i will show like little process of it boop 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 type of thing um because that's not our main focus our main focus is finishing this off okay so enjoy okay so i have two of my earrings done here okay to do a pair of earrings on here it's just basically finishing this off and then starting another one by tying on a new string of our Nymo thread. That's all it is. It's nothing crazy. Don't let it beat you. I do finish mine off a little bit differently than the normal average beating that everyone else does, okay? So let me show you what I do. Now, I am going to try my best to explain it in such a way that it completely makes sense to you, okay? All right, let me finish this, this last row. So of course, we know because you went back to another video to find out on your own how to do looming is that initially you put your beads underneath your weft threads and you put them up in between the weft threads. Then you take your needle to go over the weft threads and through the beads. Okay, so keep that in mind. So we went over it. Okay, so now I'm at the end. This is the last row of beads here, okay? So what I like to do is I like to take my thread, okay? And I wanna work them through the couple of rows. But in order to do that, you have to make sure that you are putting your thread in the right area, okay? Where this thread is coming out is coming out above our weft threads. Now I'm gonna put it under our weft threads and in this first one i'm just going to push it through and basically what i'm doing is i'm putting the thread in a different position so once i take this needle to thread it through these beads it comes out the other side but it doesn't come undone you're basically locking your thread in place. It's not gonna come back through the beads again, okay? Now I'm gonna put my needle through these beads. 
all right? And push it through. And basically, in essence, I just locked my thread down. It's not gonna come out loose no matter how you do it, okay? But I like to do that all the way down our work here, okay? Basically, going to be working through, okay? So I'm, that's what I'm doing just to tie off. And what you're doing is you're making your, you're making your beading work stronger, okay, when you do that. I'm gonna grab my very first piece of thread where we tied our knot. I'm gonna grab the end of that. And I'm gonna thread it onto my needle and I'm gonna pass it through to the other side. And then we're gonna cut these strings off. There we go. And now we are just going to cut it off. Don't get it too close. You don't need it to be too close, okay? These are two less strings that we have to worry about. So what you see what I did here is the same thing that I did for these right here, okay? So now, here's the good part. How do we get this off our loom without absolutely destroying it? And I'm gonna show you how. So now you can see my whole loom here, okay? Simply all I do is take it off of our loom. We just untwist it and just pull the loops off. All right. Here we go. This is what it should look like. So we have a series of loops and ends and it's like, what in the world? So I'm gonna do something where you're gonna feel like, no, but you know what? We're doing it. So you wanna cut your threads right in the middle here, especially if you're making earrings, it doesn't matter as long as you cut somewhere along the edge of the bottom of whatever you're working on, okay? But in, the, in our case, we have two pair of earrings, so I'm just gonna cut it right here. All right, here comes the fun part. I always enjoy doing this, okay? Let me just put it all to the side so you can watch it as we, as we go. Now, what I did notice, you see how I don't know if you can see, but I have the, the end, this one is the last one I tied on. I'm gonna cut this off because I don't need it to be on. This is gonna be just a loose string, okay? So I'm gonna cut that because we don't need that. Now, you see these ends right here? I'm going to start pulling them through our beads here. So I'm gonna pull it until it stops, okay? That's good, I like that. Now, now start watching these loops start to disappear. So we're gonna pull them down. I have to make sure that the loops are not inside of each other. Keep pulling until it stops. Just watch your string know where it's going, know where you don't want it to be. So I'm gonna start pulling. Whichever ones go. So I'm gonna pull this one. This is good. Look at that. I need another string to pull. That one didn't work. So I'm gonna pull this one. Yay. Let's pull this one. Alrighty. Let's 
So basically they just pulled in on themselves. It's like loops. There's like these little small loops. Okay. So that's how we know we did good. Okay. Now I'm going to leave these for later. They're good. So I'm going to cut these a little bit closer. I'm going to try to cut, I'm going to try to cut these so that they're even. So we're going to cut those. They're even get rid of it. Because basically what we're doing is we're trying to just have a place for the beads, have a place for the strings. Okay. So we're good. That's good. Now let's move on to our second piece. The second piece should be a little bit easier. This is what I should have showed you first, but here we are. Okay. So now I am going to start pulling them and start looking at these loops. And I'm watching also to make sure that they're not looping on each other. There you go. Start, let me go to the next string. Nothing's happening, so I'm not gonna touch it anymore. Let's go to the third one. There we go. Start pulling it. Make sure that they're not intertwined. Continue pulling it. That one's finished off, okay? I'm gonna go on to the next one. Here we go. Boom. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. There we go. And there goes the next one. So this right here, here's the one end here. It's all finished off. There's just little loops right on top of the beads, okay? Every other bead has a little loop, has a little string around it. And then you have all these on the end. Now I am going to cut it. These scissors are spanking brand new. Spanking brand new and it's already been used on cardboard. Why? So anyway, so there we have it. So we have two little pieces that we're gonna make into earrings, okay? So we're gonna set those aside for now. For some reason, I feel like I don't wanna just leave this the way it is. You can if you want to, but you know, I'm extra. Let me show you the construction of the pair of earrings that I made in the past using this technique. I did a little box around the edge here. Looks cute, I like it. So let's recreate that. I'm gonna take my 18 gauge wire here. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bend just so I know that this right here is going to be a um, loop later on. Now, I'm gonna take one of my earrings So we know that this is going to be the loop later on. So I'm going to basically get, cause I want this loop to be right in the middle of the top. Okay. So I like where that is. So I'm going to do a little bend right at that corner, bend it down. Now, I don't want this to be absolutely perfect. I just want it to be the outline of the earring, okay? And this is just regular 18 gauge copper wire that I'm using here. So I got a little corner here. Now I'm gonna mark and see in my, in my mind's eye where I want this edge to be. So I'm gonna do a little mark. All right, so I have a nice little mark there. So I'm gonna bend it right on that mark. Okay, so I'm just making sure that my wire is all straight in the places I want it to be. All right. 
So, so far, this is what we have. It looks good. I like it really quick while I have it down here. I'm going to make a little mark so I can make the bend to go this way. All right, let's do the second bend. All right, and let's make sure that our wire is straight. All right, let me check this out. All right, looking good, looking good. Cause I want it to be tight, but I don't want it to be so much that it's gonna make this bubble up a little bit. We don't want that. So I want it to be tight, but not too tight. Nah, I mean, kind of like our pants. It'll be tight, but not too tight. Like, whoa, ma'am. Alrighty, I made a little mark so I can make the make the wire go this direction. All right, so now we have a nice little box. It's tight, but not too tight. I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna eye up and I think I need about that much string, that much wire. All right, so now I'm just eyeing this up and looking at it and saying, okay, where am I going to start doing my loops up to lock it in. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna do a bend, just one bend, okay? Then I'm gonna start wrapping it around. And I'm gonna use my hands to do it because I wanna make sure that it's not wrapping too tightly, whereas it distorts this shape. So I'm just doing it with my hands. So it's looking like so far, sometimes the shape can get distorted, but that's okay. You can always reshape it. All right. Now I'm going to cut the wire that I was just wrapping. And now let's focus on making the loop. So I am bending my wire this way. I'm going to grab a pair of loopers just to give myself a nice little loop, nothing crazy. Calm yourselves. And I'm just wrapping it around these pliers get myself a nice little loop, squish it down. And so once I have my loop, which really looks good, I'm going to tie this off. I'm just gonna hold it and I'm gonna do it with my hand. Cause this is 20 gauge cop or 18 gauge copper. So it's easy to like bend it with your hand and I don't need to go crazy with it. So that helps. Then I'm going to cut that end because everything is locked down. <laughs> I didn't I didn't hold the wire and the wire went somewhere. It's somewhere over there. 
<laughs> so now we have our little box here. Here's the moment of truth. I always hate this part. When I go and I'm like, let me see if it fits. Like Cinderella's um, slipper. And it somewhat does. Look at that. All right, so now I'm gonna do that again. So now I have my two earring bases here. So I have two of them. I got my two loomed pieces. And I'm going to grab a little square of my faux leather, which is in the description box below. And I'm also going to grab some of my B7000 glue. I want to connect these in this manner, okay? Where this loop thing right here, I wanna make sure the loop is past the faux leather, okay? We don't want it to be like this. We don't want it to be like this because I'm not trying to cut that with this loop being in the way, it ain't gonna happen, okay? So I'm gonna glue these down, these earrings and this base down, but I'm gonna start first with gluing down the earrings. So let's do that real quick. I'm just guessing, cause I like to do that. Just get in the central area where I know this piece is going to be. I'm putting some glue down first. And what we want to do is we want to get these to be laying flat, okay? What I do is I take this and I pull these, I put all these strings down into the glue and I'm going to move them through the glue. So they're just going to just sit in the glue, okay? I feel like I need a little bit more glue down a little bit further because we're pulling, we're gonna pull these strings through the glue. There we go. And I'm gonna push it back. And now I'm going to push it down, but I'm also paying attention to the edge. I gave myself enough edge where this piece of wire can go around this work, okay? Now I'm gonna press it down. See that there's a little bit of the string poking through. I'm just gonna take a loose piece of 18 gauge wire and just push those down in there. Do the same thing at the top. I might cut those off, but no, we could just push these down in here. They may fight you, but get them back there because then they will be locked down in there and out of the way. There we go. We have our first piece, our first earring is done. Now let's do the same thing for the second earring. Woo. All right. This glue kind of reminds me of E6000 where it just keeps coming out. Once you squeeze it, it just keeps coming out and then you have to like pay attention to it and make sure no <laughs> more than you need does not come out. And then next thing you know, you wasted the entire tube. So, and not only does it come out the same way E6000 does, it also stinks just like E6000. So, and I always say, if your glue stinks, that means it's strong. Science, okay? If y'all didn't know that, you know now, your glue gotta stink. So again, I'm gonna take my strings and put them in the glue. Just get them saturated a little bit because they start to get a little sticky and then they stay where you put them, okay? So now I'm going to push it down and I also wanna leave a little bit of space there for our wire to go in and cover up your work, okay? So I'm pressing it down, but I'm also gonna take my little loose piece of wire here and I wanna take, I might even cut these a little bit more. Y'all, tell your family to stop using your scissors for cardboard. All right, so now I'm gonna take my little loose piece of wire here and I'm gonna use that as a little pusher thing where I'm gonna push, a little tool that I'm gonna push the wires underneath. 
There we go. It's better to do it from this angle. So we're just gonna push them in. Again, this one too, push that in, press down, have a little bit of wire, or have a little bit of thread trying to peek through, push that in there also. Alrighty. So I like to bend it too. I just wanna make sure that it is getting into the nooks and crannies. All right, so there you have it. All right, now we have our two pieces of wire and I'm going to do a quick little breeze through of this glue just along the edge. I love this um, faux leather um, backing. I'm gonna be using it for a lot of things. I just love it so much. It's so perfect for a lot of projects that I have, but it soaks up the glue nicely. Okay, and I'm trying to make sure the edge is saturated, but not overly saturated. Whereas when you press the metal in there that it oozes out on the edges. So I'm just gonna press it down in there because all it needs to do is just to finish off our work. Okay. Something else I like to do is I like to take my anvil. I use this anvil for a lot of things, but I, I don't do any metal working with it. I just use it as a weight for right now. Is that bad or good or? Again, I'm gonna do that for the second earring. Got a little too much glue, but that's okay. Spread it out as much as you can. And then I'm gonna put this little piece of metal in. Fits perfectly. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and then once we come back, we're gonna cut it out and then we're gonna finish our earrings with a little bit of earring wire. Stay tuned. Okay, so after letting it dry for a little bit, I'm gonna cut these out. So we should have this. Looks good, I love it. So I'm gonna grab some 20 gauge wire. I'm gonna make my loop, because we're gonna make our own earring wire. Once I made my loop, I'm going to take my earrings and I'm going to slip it on. All right. Take a pair of pliers and just, I'm just gonna hold that loop. Then I'm going to close it. Take the wire, bend it in the opposite direction. And take my loopers, pick the largest loop on there and just wrap my earring wire around it to shape it. Take it off. Then I'm gonna take this end, bend it around, and then I'm going to bend the end up. There you go. And there you go. So I'm gonna place a video here that goes a little bit more in depth of how to make earring wire. All right, and there you have it. Made with a loom, some seed beads, and a little bit of wire. So let me show you this these close up, okay? Yes. So pretty. 
And if you want dainty earrings, these are like perfect. Oh my goodness. These are like the most perfect dainty earrings I've ever owned. Just, just plain perfect. All right. So these are the different things that I've made using that technique. I have like another pair of earrings using the same concept. I put it on a bracelet. I made it a little bit bigger, put it on a bracelet, use the same concept of finishing it off. But I put two loops on either end. This, I just put little jump ring into it between the backing and the wire. So I made a little necklace out of it. So yeah, there's, this technique could be used for many, many things. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, I wanted to highlight, like I did on my last video, I wanted to highlight a comment that I received um, that I just, I just think you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the video. Mm. And then other than that, you guys, the like, subscribe, comment. If you look below the video, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but below the video, you got the, the thumbs up, thumbs down. You have the share button. You have the download button. You have the little heart that says thanks and has a little money sign in there. I don't know what they call that. I think they call this super thanks. Um, they have clip and then they have save to playlist. So if you do any of those things, those are the things that really boost my channel and it really makes it go through the stratosphere. Stratosphere? Stratosphere. That's the word. I don't know what I said before. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Bye. Yay. That was much better. I need to do this for every video, huh?